Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan Grek, and on today's episode, I'm gonna run through everything about the homemade storage cabinets that I built in the back of my Jeep. So I was on a really tight budget. I built these by myself with basic tools, and they were fantastic for my three years around Africa, plus the couple of years that I've been using them since. So if you're thinking about building your own storage solution, I'll run through how I did it, how much it cost, how to make it better for next time, what I recommend for you, all of that, Coming up in today's episode, let's get right into the details. When I was on my first big overland adventure from Alaska to Argentina, I bumped into a French couple who were driving around the world in their Land Rover Defender 110. And Vince had built out the interior. It actually looked a lot like a boat. It was wooden everywhere, it had insulation, and they had a really slick interior storage system. And there was a cold, rainy night. We were in the mountains in Ecuador, and all three of us actually sat in the back of it and played cards. And that was the first time I started dreaming about what's my next vehicle and what can I build. And their sort of setup, the way they could sit on one side and have benches on the other side, that really appealed to me, and I really loved it. And it was actually the next day I posted on a forum trying to get measurements of a four-door Jeep Wrangler saying, I wonder how it compares. Is it long enough? Is it wide enough? And so that was when I first started thinking about it. Then obviously I saved for years and years and I bought a four-door Wrangler with the intention of building cabinets in the back. And actually dad and I came up with this sketch when I was in Australia for my brother's wedding, uh, even before I had bought a Jeep that I was going to use. And this was all approximate. And you can see from the sketch, originally this was going to be mirrored on the other side. And I knew all along the whole system would be based around the fridge that is mounted directly behind the front seats. And originally I figured the fridge would be behind the driver's seat. That's why everything would be mirrored. But the way that it sits, it doesn't quite let the seat go back all the way. And so I just decided on the spot, I said, okay, I'll put the fridge behind the passenger seat they lose out on a tiny bit of leg room and then everything gets mirrored around. So the high cabinets are on this side and the bench seating is on the other side. And one of the features that Vince and Marie had was the ability to move their cabinets around so that they could sleep down below as well. So this is kind of dual purpose. You can see in this photo here where I sit inside and I can work on my laptop, I can make a sandwich, anything like that, especially when the roof is popped open, it's actually really comfortable. And in that photo, the wooden planks are still behind my head. I can actually move those entirely out of the way and I get a lot of interior space. With the roof closed, it's kind of a bit too cramped for me at six foot two. But the other mode that I have is I can move these cabinets from here and I can put them in the aisle, which makes the entire area flat for sleeping. And my idea here was that if I was at a border or somewhere where I didn't feel too safe, if I didn't want to pop open the roof, I had an ability to sleep inside the vehicle. I could just climb from the driver's seat back, set up a bed, crash for the night, then in the morning kind of climb back in the driver's seat and keep moving. And I thought that would be really helpful, and it turned out not to be. I didn't really need it. I used it once or twice in Morocco when it was insanely windy and the rooftop tent was kind of blowing around in the wind. And then for the rest of the time, I have never ever moved those cabinets. I've never slept down below again. So as much as it seemed like a good idea, it's not something I'm going to incorporate next time. So with all of that said, how did I actually build these cabinets? Well, I'm not much of a carpenter. I kind of worried that if I built anything out of timber, it just really wouldn't wind up square and I'd spend all my time trying to make perfect joints instead of just hurrying up and building it and getting on the trip. So what I went for is I used aluminum tubing. So this is one inch aluminum tube that you can buy from like home hardware or any kind of hardware store. This is just straight pieces. And then on the corners, you can buy these plastic corner connectors. And it's a little bit hard sometimes to find these online. I know in Australia, you can just get them from Bunnings. Uh, Amazon carry them at times. I'll do my best and I'll put a link in the description, see what I can come up with. But these corner connectors come in all different shapes and sizes. So you can have a regular corner like this. You can have a midway join that brings in four. You have six ways, eight ways. You have all different combinations. And basically what it means is, as long as you cut your aluminum tube square, once you put it into the connector, you're guaranteed to have a nice square corner. It's impossible to do anything else. 
And actually I used a drop saw to cut all of these, which is super fast and guaranteed to be square. So in terms of building square boxes, which is essentially what my cabinets are, it just makes it unbelievably quick and easy. And for my entire cabinet setup, I think I spent a couple of hundred dollars on the aluminum tube and about a couple of hundred dollars more on the corner connectors. So it's not super cheap, but it's really easy to work with and it's really lightweight. The frames themselves weigh almost nothing. And if I did want to redo it, I could obviously reuse the corner connectors and a lot of the aluminum tubing. Maybe I'd just have to buy another section or two if I wanted longer straight pieces. So I basically built the frames just as squares and then I covered them in plywood. And the plywood on the doors here, this is just quarter inch, I don't even remember, but it says some brand name on the back. It's just like the cheapest, thinnest plywood you can buy. And I remember thinking, it doesn't need to be strong because it's just on the walls here. And it's attached at the back there via a piano hinge, nothing special, old little cabinet latches from like a, you know, an old RV or a caravan. Again, I bought those at Home Depot for like $3. And I just used a hole saw to put a little hole here so that you can actually open the cabinets. So they're not fancy by any stretch, but they work really well. On the sides, quarter inch ply. And then on the top sections, I knew that I would be sitting on the one behind me. I would be putting them down to sleep on and they had to kind of support their own weight. So I used three eighths ply on the top and the bottom of each one of these. And then further up in the Jeep, I have a false floor where the plywood just continues its straight section. And I used half inch for that because I figured I'd be walking on it and all of that kind of stuff. When it came to designing it and figuring out how big everything needed to be, I literally just designed it in place. So I knew that these cabinets had to fit inside the aisle and basically take up the whole width. So that sort of determined the width of the cabinets behind me, which were also based on the fridge, and then the width of this cabinet and the upper cabinet to help me get all of that right. I also wanted the cabinet behind me to be perfectly level with the fridge for sleeping. So that determined my overall height of the two lower sections, which then determined the height of this as well. So it all just kind of fit into place and I literally just made it up as I went along with a spirit level, a tape measure, a few pieces of string and a sketch pad where I was kind of figuring out how it would all look at the time. And then to actually bolt it into the Jeep, all I've done is I drilled straight down through the aluminum tubing, straight through the tub of the Jeep and I just ran a bolt through with a nut and a washer on the bottom. And I did put some silicon on that as well to try and make it waterproof for the water crossings. And so each one is bolted down in about three different places, I think. And actually when I designed it, I really didn't know if it would be strong enough and kind of durable enough. I was really worried that it wouldn't be. And I ended up thinking to myself, well, you know, if it doesn't work out, I'll just smash it out in Africa and come up with some other solution. But it turns out even now, five years later, when I rock these cabinets, basically the whole Jeep suspension starts moving. So the cabinets themselves are still rock steady. They've never moved. They've never been not strong enough. Um, so in terms of how well did they work, I'm gonna give it 10 out of 10. The plywood, when I bought it, it was totally untreated. So I just bought some like lacquer type sealant stuff and I gave it a couple of coats all over inside and out. And some days I daydreaming about maybe redoing it. They're definitely getting dirty and kind of worn thin from all my years of using them. But I mean, it's not necessary. I think it's, it's been perfectly fine and there's no reason to go ahead and change it right now. Lots of people have asked too, what do I put in each of my cabinets? How do I deal with my interior storage? And one of the great things about this is it does help me keep everything in different places. I know where everything is and virtually everything inside the Jeep, I can close my eyes and reach in for it because I know where everything is. I lived out of this for so long. One of my first considerations immediately was I wanted the lighter things up the top here and I'd keep the heavier things at the bottom and even down in the old footwell from the rear passenger seat. That's where I have my tools and spare parts. And I also don't get those out very often. So right off the bat, the furthest one back here at the top, this is all of my clothes. So I literally had all my t-shirts, my jeans, my shorts, my underwear, socks, everything like that was just in that cabinet. And at times I had them in sort of separate bags because if I don't, they sort of create a bit of an avalanche path where they end up on an angle and they all just want to fall out all the time. 
and sometimes on really bumpy roads, it would actually pop this cabinet door open and some of my clothes would fall out. But in terms of, you know, keeping them out of the dust, keeping them all in one place, I'm really happy that that's just like my go-to clothes cabinet. It's worked really well. The next one closest to us here, this became kind of my cooking cabinet. So this is, I'm attempting to keep it light, but it got a little bit heavy. So this has everything in it from pots and pans to bowls to extra cutlery. It's got all my different spices in it. It's got cups. Um, I had lots and lots of light things in here. So at times there was chips, there were bread, there was wraps, there was some vegetables, kind of anything that was light. And I really loved this cabinet because it's so close to my whole kitchen area. Whenever I'm cooking, doing anything like that, I just reach over and 99% of the stuff I need for cooking is right here in this cabinet. The lower section here, this is kind of heavier stuff and kind of camping stuff. And so I really love, this is a really long cabinet, it goes all the way forward. So the first thing here on top is my two camping chairs. And again, really nice to have those easy to get out. It's kind of the first thing you pull out when you get somewhere to camp. And then underneath, I've just got a big plastic tub and that ended up full of like heavy cooking stuff. So tinned food, heavy things like apples, anything that had liquid in it, definitely was down here in this one because it's so low, I wanted that weight down there. And you don't get them out every day, so it didn't matter that it's a little bit tricky to get out. I can also get into that lower cabinet from up here. It's still the same section, I can access it. And actually right at the front there, I have a few things like spare oil, spare radiator, coolant, uh, I have some jumper leads in there. It kind of just wound up as a little bit of odds and ends, but again, it's down nice and low. And up there in that back corner, I rarely ever get anything out. So it kind of wound up being things that were like tucked away that I forgot about for a while. On the other side here behind me, immediately the first thing is actually uh, my plastic container that has my stove in it. And so the way that things worked out, I had to buy this plastic container in Namibia because I broke my original one when I was in the Congo. That was a big mistake. So this tub actually, I have to take the lid off to get it out. It's that tight, it almost doesn't fit. I should probably keep my eyes out and buy another tub one of these days. But anyway, this tub, it's got my stove in here. It's got everything for filling up the stove. It's even got the gas that I fill the stove with. And of course, this tub, as you've seen before, is multi-purpose. So I also use this tub to do my laundry. I use this tub to fill my water system. So I love having that super accessible because again, you get to camp, you wanna pull out the stove, make a cup of tea, make a coffee, things like that. Further up in this cabinet, again, I wanted to keep the heavy stuff down low and it kind of wound up as a bit of a grab bag. If I start pulling things out of here, you can see immediately I've got my first aid kit, I've got a rope that I used for a clothesline. I've got a tarp that I used a couple of times to put on the ground when I was like um, doing an oil change or something like that. I have my big tub of rice. I have, oh yeah, more medical stuff in there, sunscreen and things like that. So kind of that forward section, it round up like a bit of a mess. Uh, and actually that became the cabinet whenever I had anyone traveling with me. If I had a backpacker or when I had my girlfriend with me, that was where they would store their stuff. So that's how I keep my cabinets organized. It's not rocket science. And I really did just figure it out as I went along. Once I built this thing, I was kind of moving through the US, like getting the pop-up roof and a few things like that. And I just lived out of it and I camped. I realized pretty quickly I needed things that I used all of the time to be really easy to get at and things I didn't need so often, they can be tucked away down low or even under the false floor at the front. So I hope that video has been helpful and I hope it gets you thinking about what your needs are for storage in your vehicle. And hopefully it helps you realize too, you don't have to spend a fortune and you don't have to get it perfect on the first attempt. If you use basic plywood and some screws, you're only gonna spend $100 on your system. Try it out for a few weekends or a few weeks, see what you like, see what you wanna improve and then modify it. That's perfectly okay. Your needs are different than mine, so you'll have a different solution than mine. So I hope it's been a helpful video. If it has, hit thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And once again, big thanks to my supporters on Patreon. They're helping make these videos come true. So they're supporting me so that I can bring all this to you guys. And as always, stay safe out there and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.